What's up everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be doing an overall market update, taking a look at the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. We're also going to be doing a trading update, talking about what I did today in the markets, as well as some stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here in the month of September in 2019. You guys, ticker symbol UGAZ, being the top one that I'm personally watching right now. And if you guys want to actually fast forward to that part of the video since I did have that in the title of today's video go down below to the description box I'll have a timestamp there so I don't waste any of your time we're also going to briefly talk about what happened today regarding the trade war because that is what pumped up the markets today and where I personally see the markets going here in the next couple of days due to this positive news. So if you find value in this video, if you enjoy the content that I'm putting out here on YouTube, feel free to go down below and hit the like button. That is how you can repay me and also subscribe to the channel if you want to see further content involving the stock market, trading, investing, and personal finance. So without further ado, guys, let's just get right into it. The S&P 500 today Today, the 500 largest publicly traded U.S. companies ended up closing the day up $38 here, up 1.3%. Give me a second here, guys. My phone is buzzing. 1.3% in the green for the S&P. The NQ today, the NASDAQ, up 130 points, up 1.65%, really due to the strong rally that tech had today. Apple up $4, Amazon up $40, Facebook up $3.75, Google up $30, Microsoft up $2.42 per share. Very, very strong day out of the biggest companies out there in the world world or some of the biggest companies uh, that is. So going here to the Dow Jones Industrial Average, up 372 points at the close, up 1.41%. So overall today, guys, the markets were absolutely amazing, right? Very, very strong green day today in the markets. And this was actually the highest the S&P 500 has been at in over a month. That's pretty, pretty interesting to see that the S&P is finally getting back up there close to the all-time highs yet again after being down pretty low in terms of, you know, support levels and resistances here over the past couple of months in this past week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, ever since we've done towards the end of uh, July heading into the month of August. So what moved the markets today, guys? Well, we got some news that China and, United, and the United States, they're going to start negotiations again in person in the beginning of October, whether it's the first week, the second week, we'll find out more towards when that actually does happen. And I believe that is occurring in Washington. So this is a very good sign that they actually want to start talking again, negotiating in person to maybe finally come to a conclusion and resolve the trade war, right? We got on the 1st of September, we got tariffs from China and the United States. They were slapped on each other. And over the next couple of weeks, next couple of months, there's going to be more tariffs coming into effect, right? We all know automotive tariffs. We have tariffs on oil, right? We have tariffs on a bunch of other goods like electronics, right? And these are all going into effect here, and some of them already are in effect. So now that we finally got a breath of fresh air, some good news revolving the trade war, because a lot of it recently, most of it recently, has been very negative. Now that we got this good news, the market took it, and the market ran with it. A lot of euphoria today revolving this, involving this. And honestly, guys, it's kind of funny, because this has happened a lot in the past, right? We've noticed how there's a lot of negative negativity and then all of a sudden there's a positive thing regarding the trade war whether they're removing tariffs, whether they're coming to negotiations again, and then all of a sudden the market pops up. But the thing is now, there's still a lot of negative things, guys. Just because they're going into negotiations, it doesn't mean that they're 100% going to come to a trade deal. A lot of things can happen here. Let's say they go to negotiate again, they don't come to a conclusion, they butt heads, more tariffs can get slapped on, which in turn will make everything worse, right? Which in turn will probably drop 
stop the stock market. And again, I like I said a minute ago, more tariffs are coming into effect here. So overall, I still think it's more negative. You know, the trade war right now, it's more, you know, causing negative damage to the market this, uh, instead of positivity, just because, again, all the tariffs, all the potential more tariffs that can come in here. And uh, really, the only positive piece of news now is that they're coming to negotiations. So let me know down below in the comments what you guys think about that. You know, are they going to come to a conclusion? I honestly doubt it. But short term here, I think this is making the market bullish. And hey, we may be running back up to a 3000 SP here, um, you know, in the short term on this euphoria news from the trade war. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much what's been going on in the past you know, 24 hours and what really popped up the markets today. And one thing that happened here on a technical basis, the S&P actually broke above 2950, which is a very strong resistance from the past. We notice how back in the beginning of May, we were at that level back towards the end of June, we were at that level. And when we broke that level to push to all time highs, that was a level of support, right? 2950. Then we broke it right over the past month, month and a half, we broke below it, making at a resistance and now with the gap up above 2950 we're at 2975 I would love to see you know if the S&P holds 2950 now as a new support let's say we pull back and retest it I would love to see what it does here right because if we end up holding that level and then we pop up to, let's say, a 3,000 S&P, this could be a very bullish move that could be pushing us to all-time highs here. Again, at least in the short term, just off of this negotiation, the the the, uh, the beginning of more negotiations between China and the U.S. So you guys can see literally one piece of news Literally, one piece of news can change the outlook of the stock market for that week, for the next couple of days, even for the next month, two months, whatever it may be, right? And in this case, this again, in my opinion, is more of a short-term um, alleviation in the stock market. But hey, I, I might be wrong. Who knows? We might be flying up for the next month. Um, I really don't know, especially with a potential rate cut we might be seeing here, you know, in the next couple of weeks. A lot of things can happen. But now, again, 2950s. What I'm watching here, if we zoom in a bit to the 20 day, you can see we're pretty overbought right now on the RSI. So if we did pull back to 2950 and we held that, that would bring the RSI to a very healthy spot, at least on the hourly chart. And from there, we can decide, you know, are we going to maybe hold, pop up, continue this uptrend that we've been on over the past week and a half, two weeks, or are we going to break, maybe break the 50 SMA support here and start going back to 2800s? That could be the start of a downtrend, right? So at this point, that's kind of what I'm looking at here on the major markets. Um, overall, I'm seeing some bullish push. Uh, at least in the S&P and the NASDAQ and the Dow, some other indexes. Um, if you're following the Russell, I'm not too sure what those are doing, but the main ones that I follow, they're all looking pretty bullish at this point. And again, I'd love to know what you guys have to think down below. So last trading update video, stock market update video I made, the NASDAQ was trading below this 180 SMA resistance, which is this yellow line here on the four hour chart. And we talked about how if it were to break a Above that level, that would be extremely, extremely bullish. And what did we get, guys? We got exactly that. We broke above the 180 SMA. We broke out of this little horizontal channel that we've been stuck in over the past month between 77.60 and about, let's say, 74.30. We broke out of 77.50, 60-ish, that resistance level. And now we're trending at, or trading rather, at about 78 so, guys, take a look at this now. Now that we broke out of the 7760 level, we're actually at a resistance at about 7880, 7850, right around here. So, I think now, you know, the NASDAQ's going to be trading right here, right? Take a look at this trend line that I just drew. We're trading between 7750 and 7880. So, we pull back. If we pull back, we may be testing this as a new support. And from there, we could potentially hold it pop and continue the uptrend. Let's say we pop out of this level here and get into the 7900s, we may be pulling down a retest that to hold it as a new support. And from there, we may be gunning for these all-time highs. So that is a couple of, uh, those are just a couple of different scenarios that could end up playing out here. But let's say we pull back and then we start to break 
back into the 7700s, low 7700s, maybe 7600. We may be going back down to 7500, 7400. So these are just a couple, you know, technical spots that I'm watching. But again, right now, very, very bullish here. What happened today, guys, this is putting the markets, this is putting the markets in just a very bullish state. So now that we talked about that, let's go to the Dow very, very quickly. And let me just get my resistance tool out, my support resistance tool, so I could show you guys this. The NAS or the Dow today, rather, again, we talked about how it had almost a 400-point day, and we actually broke above a resistance at about $26,670. This was a resistance from back in the month of April. Also, back in the month of June, we actually held this level as a support, and we actually popped all-time highs. But since we broke that level um, in the beginning, beginning of August, right? We broke that level of support. It became a resistance again until today because we gapped above it. And now it seems like we're pulling back and looking to hold it as a support. So for this Dow Jones index to continue this uptrend that we've been in in the past two weeks right now, one, two weeks, um, whatever it may be, we need to see a hold at this level that it is right now, the level that it's at right now at roughly $26,700. This would be very key if we held this as a support and maybe start it to pop up maybe to test 26,800, 26,900. If we start to break up and do something like this, let me show you on the 20-day chart. Let's say we start to do something like this, guys. Take a look. You know, if we start to maybe pull back down and then pop and do something like that, we may be pushing to all-time highs here in no time because right now we're only 500 points, five, 600 points away from all-time highs. That's literally like two very strong groups green days in the markets, the Dow Jones, just like that snap of a finger is going to be at all time highs again. So just keep an eye on this level. Um, we may do a mini pullback and then a pop there. That is very, very possible. But let's say we break this level of support. We may be going back down to let's say 26,200, which is the next prominent level of support um, that I'm seeing here on the Dow Jones industrial average. So that's pretty much it, guys, for the market update portion of today's video crazy day. I'd love to know what you guys think down below in the comment section about the trade negotiations. What are your opinions on this? Is this a short-term um, fix in the markets? How long is this going to last? Is the market going to dump in the next week once this euphoria starts to uh, uh, phase off? I'd love to know what you guys have to think. So now let's hop into the trading portion of the video and we'll talk about you guys because that's actually what I ended up day trading today on a very, very textbook pullback play that I want to share with you guys right now. So we'll go to the 20 day one hour and we'll take a look at what you guys is telling us here. So what you guys is telling us here is that it's been uptrending since the $11 mark here. We've broken above moving average resistances being this 50 SMA, which is the green line, and the 180 SMA, which is the yellow line. We've been holding those levels, those moving averages as support levels, right? And we've been making higher highs and higher lows. And this, and this past, in this past week, about five, six, seven days in particular, look what we've, what we've been holding. We've been holding this green line, pulling back, and it seems like every time we've popped to a high, we've pulled back and we've held that spot as a new support, right? We've held it as a support, rather not really a new support, but we've held it as a support. So today we got that dump in uh, natural gas and we got that dump in U gas, right? We got the dump in U gas from 19 or 1830 down to about 1690, maybe low at like 1675 or something like that. And I actually talked about this in a comment yesterday on my YouTube channel. And I talked about how in specific natural gas could potentially pull down, retest 240 as a new support and then maybe pop up. And that's exactly what it ended up doing, guys. No joke. I didn't make a trading update video yesterday because I made a FinViz scanner update video, but I talked to somebody in the comments and I would have mentioned this in the video yesterday if I did record it. But what I was thinking yesterday is natural gas, right? We're trending between 240 and 250. What I was thinking yesterday, because we were in the middle of this channel, I was thinking we may pull down, 
we may retest 240 as a support, and from there, we might pop up. And that's literally exactly what ended up playing out today in the market. And if I zoom in a bit closer, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about, right? We can see literally the pull down, the hold at 240, which just happened to be above the 50 SMA as well on this hourly chart. And then what happened from there, guys? We popped. We popped, and that gave the margin of profit that I wanted to see on you guys, right? And you can see on the intraday chart, we hit a high at 246. We pulled down. We hit 240 exactly like I said, like I was thinking yesterday. And I think I posted it on my Instagram as well in, in, in a story form. And we held it, and we started to pop up aggressively um, starting at about 11 o'clock. And then once I saw this strong move, I put some money in you guys. I started building my position and uh, just watching it with kind of a mental stop loss. And I made some pretty good money today on you guys, guys. And if we go back to the one day, one minute chart on you guys, we can see how it played out um, here. We, we hit 1850 yesterday, or rather, this was actually this morning. We pulled all the way down to about 1680, and then we started to pop. We broke above the 50 SMA, and this is when I started to take a position, right? I think it was like 1725 or something like that and then once we started to break above the 180 SMA we started to test this old resistance here or the resistance at about 1785 this is when I ended up scaling out of the position so 1720 1722 roughly I believe my cost was pretty good day today guys it was upwards of three percent three point four percent um on you guys today on a very quick little momentum play here so overall guys it played out perfectly it doesn't always happen this way right but today just just went beautifully right we 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 executed the plan I wanted to get in when natural gas was retesting 240 to make sure that it was going to hold that and not break below it because if it were to break below 240 get back down to the 230s that would be a bit more risky but the fact that it held it it started to pop up that gave me the confirmation I needed and from there you guys was pulling down to the 50 SMA it popped on the 50 SMA and that's where I ended up executing my plan and uh, making my money right that's what I ended up doing today so I'd love to know what what you guys have to think about um, you guys. What did you guys do in terms of trading today? Let me know down below in the comment section. So now that we're on the topic of you guys, let's just get right into it and break it down. So natural gas, if we go back to it, now that we executed on the 240 trade up to about 245, 244, whatever, now we're seeing natural gas is kind of in the middle of this channel again between 240 and 250. So tomorrow, one of two things can end up happening, right? And heading into to the pre-market session as well. One of two things can end up happening. We can end up, you know, if we go to the 30-day chart very quickly, we could end up, let's say, filling the gap all the way up to 250 tomorrow, right? That would give us some t uh, about 2% upside here in natural gas and about a 6% upside in you gas because it's a 3x leveraged ETN. It goes up whenever natural gas is going up, right? That could be scenario one. We fill the gap. We make 6-7% on you gas if we time it out correctly. If this ends up happening, which it might not, right? Because not always things go according to plan that's just unrealistic right but let's say that happens that is one scenario what else could happen is we may pull down and retest 240 again right we may pull down and do something like this retest 240 and at that point the 50 SMA is going to be meeting meeting us up here right and we may be bouncing again on that level that might be another dip by to repeat what ended up happening today right we pulled down hit 240 popped we could end up doing that again hit 240 pop and then you guys is going to have even more margin of profit if it does end up pulling down so something that can happen again guys we may pull down Test $16.70, $17, you know, and then go up from there. Overall, the resistance that I'm seeing right now is at about $18.50. If we zoom in a bit on the 90-day chart, you can see it even better, right? $18.20 roughly, not $18.50, probably around $18.30. But if we break $18.30, you guys has a straight shot to $20 per share. And let me explain, guys. Natural gas... All we need to see is a pop above 250. If we get to 250, if we start to break up to the mid 250s, which would be the next resistance, honestly, if we're just dragging this out a bit, that's going to give 
you guys a straight shot to twenty dollars. It's simple math, right? If we move another, let's say. 4% here in uh, natural gas, what's that going to be in, in a move for you guys, right? 4% times 3, this is roughly, right? This is roughly what would what it would be. That would be putting you guys right at $20 per share, right? Again, it doesn't move exactly 3 times, right? It's just roughly 3x. And again, if we did that 4% move, look at look at what's bringing up uh, what, what percentage value is coming up here on you guys. It's roughly 12%. So 4 times 3 12%. That is how you get the $20 price target on you guys. So that's kind of what I'm watching uh, for you guys right now, guys. We just need to see that critical resistance break, a hold on that level as a new support, and then a gun for the 20s. I think that's very, very possible. So that's the main one that I'm watching heading into tomorrow. Um, a couple other ones that I'm watching are BAC. Bank of America, this is one that I uh, swing traded last week, I believe, for a day or two, ended up cutting my losses on that. If I did end up holding, guys, I'd be up like 3-4%. It sucks. I'm kicking myself about it, but it's okay, right? I was being very cautious. Hindsight is 2020. Always remember that. And I cut my losses. Like I lost like 0.3% or whatever that is. But if I ended up holding again, I'd be up like 4%. But that doesn't matter. Uh, all you can do is look for re-entry, and that's personally what I'm doing right now. So what I'm thinking now on this two-hour chart, 90-day two-hour chart, we're breaking out of the 180 SMA, this yellow line. I like that a lot. Now we might be pulling down starting to pull down as you guys can see here after market hours to retest maybe this 50 SMA as a support or maybe $27.65 to 70 cents if we pull back down here tomorrow retest this this could be an entry point before potentially running back up to the mid 28s maybe even to the low 29s so that is something that I'm watching for here especially since we're seeing a bullish cross of the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA here on BAC. So I'm watching that very closely. I'm liking it. I just want to see a bit of a pullback first because it is a bit overbought here. Apple is another one here, guys, that's doing pretty well. I called this one out actually um, a couple of days ago. If you guys remember, we called it out right here. I don't know if you guys took advantage of it. I didn't because it gapped up the next day. Kind of missed my opportunity there, but we ended up holding the trend line very nicely. We popped up. We broke their resistance at 210. Excuse me. Now we might be seeing a potential pullback and a retest at 210 as a support. If we pull down 210, hold that spot. We could be shooting up to 214, which would give us around a 2% margin of profit. And I feel like Apple, guys, is a very trade-sensitive stock. So when the trade negotiations are occurring, when the, when uh, there's optimism regarding the trade war, I feel like Apple does well, which is why it did 2% today, which is pretty good for one day um, in Apple since it's a very massive stock. Obviously, we've seen it go 5% in a day, 6% multiple times, but uh, it feels like lately... It hasn't been doing quite well in the, in the matter of one day. So 2% in a day is pretty, pretty good for Apple here. And maybe we do end up going back up to 215 here. Uh, you know, after a pullback, that would be pretty ideal. So Apple and JNUG is another one, guys. So JNUG and gold in general, they've taken a hit here as the markets have been doing well. It makes sense, right? When the markets go up, Typically, gold's going down, right? Not always, but typically, gold's going down. And we noticed how when the markets were going down aggressively, gold was going up because people view gold as a hedge against a poor economy, a uh, risky economy. And they also see it as a as a hedge just against assets in general, like the stock market and real estate. So people were flooding into uh, gold as the markets were going down. But now, the, again, the opposite's happening. We saw gold take a bit, a pretty big hit from 1560 all the way down to about 1527. If we go to the one hour chart or the four hour chart, rather, it seems like we're actually holding this 180 SMA as a support right now, which could be a perfect dip buy. If you're trading the gold futures, right? And if you want to maybe hop into JNUG, JNUG doesn't directly trade on gold. It actually trades on GDX. 
based on GDX. It goes up whenever GDX goes up, but you can see that GDX has taken this uh, hit just like gold, right? Just like gold. Take a look at their charts. They're pretty similar. So if GDX recovers here, if gold recovers, JNUG is going to do very, very well, and it has a lot of potential in store, guys. Literally, the resistance right now on JNUG is at about $100, and it's at $81 per share. So keep an eye on these. That's what I'm personally doing. And if the markets get ugly, um, if the markets end up dumping, who knows, right? We could end up playing JNUG. And that's why it's important, in my opinion, to always have different scenarios, different options to trade based on the market going up and based on the market going down. So you can make money in all different scenarios. Just looking at JNUG here, again, like I said, $80 low right now. Resistance at about $104. That offers a 21% margin of profit. So, again, it's just worth watching. If gold goes up, this could do very well, guys. You know, this could be a very, very good trade. Um, if you're into swing trading leverage DTFs, I rarely do that. But if you do that, this has a lot of upside here. But again, don't just do that because I'm talking about it. Do your own research. Do your own due diligence. So that's pretty much it, guys. I don't want to make this video too, too long. But the whole idea here is to just keep an eye on the markets. Keep an eye on this trade war stuff. Keep an eye on these tariffs potentially coming coming in new tariffs, even retaliations, keep an eye on the interest rate cuts. These are what, you know, this is what really is pushing the markets nowadays. I feel like it's not really earnings anymore. Right now, it's strictly interest rate cuts. It's strictly optimism regarding trade war or negativity regarding the trade war or negativity regarding interest rate cuts. You know, that is what's moving the markets nowadays. And uh, just keep an eye on that. Keep your eye on the ball and you'll do well, guys. Trust me. So that's it, right? That's it for the video. If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me. Join our Strive Smart Discord group chat as well as the Strive Smart Facebook group. Those are linked down below in the description box. And that's it, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video. Hope you all did great today. Appreciate you guys watching. Peace out.